I'm now absolutely delighted to be joined by uh, Mikkel Fode, who is uh, one of the winners of the best abstract here at uh, this year's conference. Well, first of all, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to come and talk to us today. Uh, tell us a little bit about the work that uh, led up to this uh, abstract. So, uh, so this abstract is, uh, is kind of a simple questionnaire-based uh, based study, and I, I feel like sometimes uh, the simple way is, is maybe the best way to look at things. Um, there's uh, a lot of controversy about uh, return to uh, baseline erectile function after radical prostatectomies. People tend to measure uh, erectile function in, in, in many different ways after radical prostatectomies, and this means that there are uh, great variations in, in, um, in the proportion of patients who, who have a, uh, whatever you want to define as sufficient uh, erectile function after surgery. So uh, what we did was, uh, aside from the, the, the usual questionnaires that's always used, we asked the questions, uh, the, the simple question, is your uh, erection back to baseline, is it as good as before the surgery? And what we found was that when we asked men in this simple way, the number dropped uh, dramatically. When looking at the traditional questionnaires, it was about 23% of the patients were back to baseline, so to say. And, and when we just asked patients, uh, the figure was 6.7%. Uh, so almost everybody, and this is really the message that should now be uh, conveyed to, uh, to patients, almost everybody loses at least some erectile function after radical prostatectomy. Well, what's the implications of that in a clinical setting and moving forward? So clinically, I think, I mean, there's a lot of discussion also here at this uh, EAU conference about what patients should undergo a radical prostatectomy. Right. And I think when you do discuss uh, treatment options with patients, it's very important to be upfront and to be uh, honest about uh, the side effects to the surgery. Right. And, and it's very important that patients before the surgery, before they decide if they want the surgery, they know what the implications are for their sexual function in, in this case. How important is it in, in terms of from that, from what you just said and from the work that, uh, that, that adequate, if you like, patient consultation is carried out over these issues? I think it's extremely important. I mean, this is, um, this is the whole issue of, of, of patients deciding for themselves. Uh, and that's really the, 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 the personalized medicine and, 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 and the way things are going. It's also very important because after the surgery, uh, erectile function should be dealt with, sexual function should be dealt with uh, systematically. And, and I mean, um, when we're um, honest about it and, and when we're realistic about how bad the function is in, in, in most patients, uh, it's, it, it's going to lead the way to, uh, to, to better treatments afterwards, I think. Well, thank you very much indeed for coming to talking to us. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank you.